What's up? How are you guys this weekend? We haven't done a Q&A in a little while, so I figured I would answer some of your questions. Starting with, my water kefir successfully brews a well-fermented water kefir. However, I don't see much growth in grains multiplying. Since it still ferments properly, the grains are still alive. I use a low mineral water. Would high mineral water help fix this? Uh, so water kefir can be really finicky. You know, even if you just miss one day of feeding or the temperature was too hot, it could ruin the health of the grains and the probiotic strains. You might also not be adding enough molasses. If anything, a low mineral water would make things worse because the kefir grains need a lot of minerals. My brother gets a lot of sinus issues from being in certain environments, generally rooms that can be dusty or when he touches his eyes after being around cats. Would the immune strength, beef, thymus, lymph nodes, supplement on a daily basis help with this? Uh, so it has actually helped, and I think we spoke about it in a video last week. Uh, one of my customers left a review on the water kefir saying that his allergies were fixed. And ever since I've been drinking the water kefir consistently, I haven't really had allergies. Because when the allergens in the environment come into your nose, your sinus system, if you have the proper bacteria in those membranes and tissues to deal with the allergens, you're not going to get a reaction from it. So I think getting your gut healthy and a high quality probiotic would help more than those specific glandular supplements. But they're usually worth a shot, especially if you're older and haven't been following a high quality diet for a long period of time. Hi Frank, hope you're doing well. I see you take your masticum before meals, yet most protocols advise taking it on an empty stomach. Is this the most effective way to use it? So it's really tough and I should probably be using it in the morning as well, outside of meals. The H. pylori comes back very quickly and easily because it burrows itself into the stomach lining. So you really don't want to give it a chance to eat any nutrients. So yeah, ideally when you wake up, you have some on an empty stomach, then with your meals as well, maybe even before bed too. So you know, if the H. pylori is bad, if you're having symptoms, then you definitely want to take it more than just with the meal, or you'll even have to increase the dose with the meal. I went to many schools and I feel like I learned little to nothing. Do you believe that the education system, school system is flawed and corrupted? There's a reason that rich, wealthy people, families send their kids to private schools, very expensive schools. They surround themselves with fellow elite and then the regular schools where most people go, the masses, you know, they're wasting their money learning stuff to basically be uh, slaves to the system. Why does red meat cause acne for some people? I want my brother to eat more for his health, but he breaks out every time. Thank you, Frankie. Uh, this could be so many things, and the real answer to that is he needs to follow a high-quality diet with a proper probiotic, maybe some antimicrobials, and that's going to fix his skin. Uh, addressing that answer specifically, you know, does he have compromised liver function? Is the iron in the red meat causing candida overgrowth? Uh, is the undigested protein in the digestive tract causing histamine issues? It, it, it's very, very difficult to say what it specifically is. What do you think about fasting to cure and prevent cancer? It might stop it temporarily, but cancer is really just an accumulation of toxins in a specific area. So you have to remove the toxins and the radiation and all that stuff from the lifestyle, and that's what would actually fix the cancer. Yes, in some cases, fasting does help, but usually it's going to come back if you don't change the lifestyle that you were previously following. Are you concerned with microplastics in bottled water and plastics in contact with food? Yeah, it's one of those things that you try to do your best to avoid. You, know, you can only do so much. You know, most food in some way has touched some type of plastic before you eat it unless you're literally on an Amish farm growing everything and making everything yourself. Serious question, is there any use in eating chicken to prevent excess iron buildup? So there actually isn't much less iron in chicken. And chicken has so many allergens and people react poorly to it. Omega-6 ratios, I would say if anything, chicken is worse for iron overload in your liver than eating red meats. The only meats that are actually really low in iron, veal is okay, still has some, but you can go with fish. And then fish is really, really heavily polluted, so then you have downsides that might even outweigh the iron. So it's difficult to have animal protein in your diet while avoiding iron because of various reasons, how we raise it, the pollution. Are carbs necessary for fertility and progesterone in women? I think I have PCOS and want to avoid most carbs because I get bloated and they worsen my symptoms, but some people say carbs are necessary for fertility. Uh, so regardless of fertility, whether you're a female or male, specific health circumstances, 
You need carbohydrates in your diet to have a healthy gut microbiome and it's a balance. On your question specifically, if you're getting bloated and you feel bad, that's what people typically say when they go carnivore, when they go keto, they have liver damage, they have dysbiosis, and the removal of carbohydrates in their diet is kind of like a band-aid. It's alleviating their symptoms. Things are gonna get progressively worse to the point where you can't even follow that diet, but that might take five, 10, 15 years, who knows how long. Your health is just going to get worse and worse and worse. So the quick answer to the gut digestive issues is you probably need water kefir, maybe some masticum, some digestive enzymes, and then you can incorporate carbohydrates back into your diet and start removing certain foods that cause most people issues like dairy and eggs. Will using non-organic fruit kill any of the bacteria in water kefir? So if you're doing a second fermentation and you're adding fruit or fruit juice to it, you know, it doesn't really matter if it's organic or raw or not, but you, know, you wanna have some integrity to the product. Like if you're using a glass bottled mineral water and organic cane sugar, organic molasses, like that's why I put all organic raw fruit in the water key we saw on frankiesrangefoods.com. You know, otherwise, what's the point of saving a few dollars? What is the difference in calories between a slice of bread and the same slice except well toasted? Same, there's many factors going into how your food is made that are more important than a slight variance in cooking temperature. Obviously, if you burn something, it's gonna have carcinogens and your body's not gonna be able to utilize the nutrients of the food as efficiently. You know, what type of water was used to make the bread? Is the wheat organic? Was it sourdough fermented? Was there a natural yeast culture? You know, there's too many things to consider because obviously if you're burning your food, try both, see what you feel better eating. Best ingredients for a pre-workout supplement. I was going to make a natural pre-workout, but after seeing you know, how unique my Flextros product was, how the launch went, you know, I don't really sell that much of it. I figured what's the point of you know, making a, a pre-workout supplement if someone else is just gonna steal the ingredient list and ideas. On top of that, the bigger reason I didn't make one is because uh, the substances used in pre-workouts, the nitric oxide stuff is very high in oxalates, horrible for your kidneys, horrible for your liver. I would say between the protein, the creatine, and the pre-workout supplements that people take, bodybuilders, the pre-workouts are by far the worst for the organ system. It's very, very bad for you. So even with natural ingredients, I kind of opted against making a natural pre-workout supplement. If one eats carbs such as oats or rice, is it okay or not to eat animal fat throughout the day or is it going to be detrimental? I've heard people say, if you're going to eat carbs and lower the fat and vice versa, is it true? You know, your body can only really digest certain amounts of different macronutrients. So you wanna have a balance and that's why I'm so against the kind of macronutrient if it fits your macros, people. You wanna choose foods that are high quality, that you know you can tolerate and eat them to satiation and see how you feel after the meal. Is your current diet good for most diseases? Yes, and I did actually plan on making kind of like a new uh, meal plan or something that you guys can get for free on my website just to give you a basic idea of what I'm eating now and, and why certain foods are okay. Maybe I'll do that in the next few weeks, month or two. Tell us something we don't know about you. Uh, I mean, I guess I don't really talk about myself a lot or much on this channel outside of the businesses and the nutrition stuff. Uh, maybe I can do a life explanation video, although I think I've done kind of a few of those on my channel. I mean, some of you guys might not know the biggest one. I'm a triplet. I have a brother and a sister. Uh, what else? You guys know I used to be into bodybuilding. We did the fitness transformation. I think I've told you guys a few times when I was younger, I was really addicted to video games. Uh, I spent most of my early 20s working in restaurants, waiting tables and bartending. And then I kind of started YouTube. In and out of community college, I mean, it never really did much uh, in general in my life besides play video games and work. Bismuth for H. pylori. So you can't really get it. Uh, bismuth salicylate, I think they put some in Pepto-Bismol. That's why it's called Pepto-Bismol, the bismuth. Uh, I think it would be good for dysbiosis because uh, if you guys don't know what bismuth is, it's very good at breaking down biofilms, which is the mucus layer that bacteria can be in. But 
I don't think it's necessary. I think I think it's much safer to take a probiotic, like water kefir, water kefir grains, have some masticum here and there, clean up the diet, reduce the radiation, exercise, increase your gut motility. Because if, if you're in a situation where you have to take really, really heavy antimicrobials, that means that there are other factors in your diet and lifestyle that uh, aren't adequate enough to uh, to fix the root cause of your digestive issues. So not as many questions as usual. Decided to do less and answer them a little more extensively. If you guys want answers to a lot of health and lifestyle stuff, of course, you can browse through my YouTube channel. I have you know, hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of hours of health information available. If you guys do want kind of the quick answer, you can reach out to me, frank if you would like a consultation. Other than that, there's a lot of interesting products as well that you can see from all of my businesses on that website, from Frankie Strange Meat, Frankie Strange Foods, Organ Supplements, Wi-Fi Shielding. Uh, every single business I've made is because there were products or things that I used myself and I couldn't find decent sources online. You know, we're wearing the uh, Wi-Fi Shielding sweatpants and sweatshirt right now as usual. Double layers, one of the most important things outside of your diet to feel better. So you can check that out guys, frank but thanks for joining. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Thanks again for joining, guys, and I'll see you for tomorrow.